review is exciting for two distinct reasons. The first one is, this is my first time getting to try out a C7 Stingray. I've spent a good amount of time in C7Z06s, which are very insane and impressive machines, but this is the first time getting to drive a C7 Corvette equipped with the naturally aspirated LT1 engine. The second reason is, it's my first time trying out the 7-speed manual found in this generation of Corvettes. When I first heard about a 7-speed manual, I was like, whoa, 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 that sounds like almost too many gears for a manual. Obviously, 7th gear is just an overdrive gear. Porsche and Chevy are the two ones that use them in the 911 and the Corvette. Uh, but so far, it's been okay. But now I get to try out what a Corvette with a manual transmission is like. I've only driven them with the automatic. So, basic numbers. The LT1 powers the Stingray. It's a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8. In this car, equipped with the uh, Z51 package, it makes 460 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. 60, they're always around like the four second range. Obviously, you get some differences between manual and the automatic uh, top speed. I mean, it's just Corvette. You can find a lot of these numbers out there. Curb weight's around 3,400 pounds. The first thing I wanna talk about is the first thing, the first impression I personally had when I uh, got in this vehicle is the interior. When I walked up to it, I was like, wow, this interior is a really big step up. And yes, I've already been introduced to it in the Z06, but it's been a couple months since I've actually been in one. This is very nice. That's the radar. There's a cop somewhere. This is very, very nice. The owner of this is very meticulous at maintaining it. This car is 14,000 miles, and it honestly feels like it just came off the showroom. It still smells showroom fresh. But regardless of the actual condition of it, the materials and the design is such a massive step up from the C6. So I've been in and around lots of C6s, and I mean, to put it nicely, they're, they're kind of crappy. It was the same with my Boss 302. The interior was was pretty crappy. It was a lot of plastic. This, oh my god, the stitching, this is raw, red cross stitching everywhere, the red contrast leather, the big digital display in the middle, the new uh, infotainment screen, the carbon fiber, which is an option you equip everywhere um, on the center dash here on the seats itself. This interior, material and build quality wise, I am extremely, extremely impressed with. And it has a great deal of features. I've got heated and cooled seats. That's awesome couple downsides in the interior. It does feel a little bit cramped. Um, now I'm, I'm a, like 6'3", bigger, taller guy, but like if I if I sit straight up, I can't, I mean, my line of sight is pretty much at the, uh, the top of the windshield. Um, and like the seats are a little bit uh, cramped. But that being said, the overall practicality, look at how big the hatch is in the back. Corvette has been, I mean, they've been known for that. You could take this on a road trip. You can fit duffel bags back there. The owner has actually taken this car to get mulch before he's got the weather tech protecting in the back. Um, but it's hugely practical. That trunk is enormous. It's probably just like as big as the one in my Audi. Maybe, maybe not quite. But beyond that, that has got all the features that are great. The build quality seems nice. I love the way this is specced with the black and red. This interior is very, very nice. We move to the exterior. Oh, one last interior thing I forgot to mention. Heads-up display, also really nice. Um, I really like heads-up displays, especially they're executed. It's executed pretty well in this car. Moving on to the exterior, the C7 design language I liked a lot. Um, it really feels so much more forward than the C6, which in comparison to C6 almost looks it looks a little bit dated. C6 is a classic good look. I still like it. Like when a Z06 or a ZR1 goes by, those things still look aggressive. But the C7 is just so much more modern, and I want to say exotic. Um, there have been times where, from a distance going by, I'm like, whoa, 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 that looks like, oh, it might be 458. The running lights kind of reminded me of a 458 from far away. Uh, but the C7 definitely stepped it up and made it look a lot more modern, almost futuristic, and a lot more aggressive. I love the proportions of it. And when you're driving, you get the big hood, which now the hood bulge looks minuscule compared to the hood bulge found in the ZR1. This, uh, white with red stripes and actually i did not know you get a lot of the vents like around the tail lights and stuff you can get them body colored i've seen this is the first time i've seen it um on a c7 or, or noticed it car also has a front splitter the side skirts if you go up to the grand sport and get the full like aero package from the z06 they look badass like these are great looking cars for me um it launched when i was like still like younger um a couple years ago, so I was like in high school, I think, when the C7 launched. And I was like, oh, this looks really cool. They might have pissed off some purists. I remember seeing somebody making a body kit to convert the rear of the C7 with, to the round taillights that you would find on the C6. And it, it was like, wait, people really care that much? I remember there was some controversy over that. But overall, I think it's aging brilliantly. They look great. More and more aggressive versions are coming out. 
C7 exterior, thumbs up. It's great. So how does it drive? As soon as you get in it, you pretty quickly get comfortable with it. The transmission feel, the shifter feel, along with the clutch. I have not found myself getting lost in this 7-speed gearbox at all. This LT1 engine, naturally aspirated, it has a good amount of pull. It sounds pretty good, not quite as loud and intense as like a Z06 with that big supercharger whine, but I'm still pretty, it, it's a good amount of power and it's usable. It's not really intimidating. I will say I don't feel quite as comfortable in the vehicle as like whenever i get into porsche or 911 immediately like okay i'm good to go this feels great um it's not quite on that level yet but overall it's it's very friendly and approachable um oh, another cop again let's see what else i want to talk about interior or driving driving dynamics you have multiple drive modes too so right now you've got weather we've got eco tour sport and track i'm going to try out tour right now it changes all these parameters this car is also equipped with magnetic ride which is i mean you got to admit it's amazing um you are able to handle really well it corners flat because it just so quickly the dampers but also it doesn't compromise ride quality i've driven on the same road in a camaro z20 which has those um dynamics the dss the spool valve dampers and that thing handles like crazy but it rides like a sack of bricks it is legit painful this is actually pretty comfortable it absorbs the road quality very well the car doesn't feel overly large it does not feel overly intimidating and the rev match i first tried out the rev match in the ss1 le and i'm sure there'll be some people who will be like ah rev match blah, 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 do it yourself hey the computer can do it really well i like trying it out and i mean i don't really complain about it you can turn it off and do it yourself if you want to um but yeah so this car has active rev matching which i think is a really cool feature to play with I mentioned the heads-up display briefly. It's got some really cool, it tells me my lateral Gs, my speed, what gear I'm in, what engine revs I'm at. This car is truly a sports car that can do everything. It doesn't, like I talked about with the owner, it's like there aren't many compromises. It's pretty comfortable. The interior is very, very nice. You've got practicality in terms of it's not too much power. It's got trunk space. It's usable. Um, a nice glass roof, which add one little thing that I think is weird. The stripes continue straight over the glass roof, so you just get these two giant opaque black lines over your glass roof. Car looks cool. It's a classic. It's got the heritage. There isn't, I, I, I can't find that many things to complain about it right now. I think the seats are a little snug to me. I don't love the driving position right now. Um, and ergonomically wise, it's not quite as good as some of the other German cars I've been in. But overall, I mean, this thing is very, very good. We talk about value. So Stingrays have been out for a while now and therefore you can find used ones, um, brand new ones. I mean, in the 70s, what I would anticipate you're getting a new one, depending on packages. You can get used ones, you can get used Z06s too. So the options are really pretty, uh, quite extensive. Therefore, I'm gonna have to say if we talk, let's just restrain it to, actually it doesn't matter if it's new or used, just the C7 Stingray in general, I think the value is one of the best out there. If you're looking for an all around sports car that handles great, is comfortable, is usable, it's really hard to beat something like this for the money. A Shelby GT350, one of my personal favorites, might have a little more of the excitement, the rawness, but it, it compromises because you've got like no interior, um, like in an R or something. It's not quite as nice as this, it's not quite as practical. Uh, it's a different type of animal. It's not as refined as this. This is a comfortable, this is, they target the 911 as a competitor, which is like a benchmark all around great sports car. So value wise, I think this is an excellent choice. You can get a used one if you want a, uh, a track toy or something to play around with. There's a huge aftermarket community to support and upgrade these vehicles. Parts are plentiful and you can source them everywhere. And hey, at the end of the day, you have a good old naturally aspirated American V8, 6.2 liter displacement, 460 horsepower is a good amount of power. I, we live in a day now where every, it seems every car rolling off an assembly line is coming out with a 707 horsepower Hellcat motor stuffed in it, or it's gonna have a demon with 840 horsepower. The new ZR1 is pushing almost 800 horsepower, 755, all, all these crazy numbers. People, I think we tend to forget that 460 is not a slouch. I just did a pull, it was fun. The engaging feel of driving with a manual transmission. It puts a big smile on your face. It's great, all around the owner loves it. I currently am very impressed, I love it. This would be a great choice if you're looking for um, a brand new Corvette. If you're thinking about upgrading from a C6, I think it is a go-to just based on the new improved interior that's almost like luxury car-like. 
not to mention the tech and performance features, magnetic ride. This thing is hands above better than a C6, and it, it definitely punches above its weight class um, in the entire sports car marketplace. Loved it. This was a lot of fun. Really cool, more uh, more friendly and easy to approach to drive than something like a Z06. Still a ton of fun. Hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.